Howdy, howdy everyone. Chris here. Welcome back to the garage. We're in the garage today working on this Dodge pickup. Now, if you've ever painted anything at home in your garage, you know one thing for sure, you will get trash in your paint job. So what we're going to do today is eliminate that dust. I'm going to share with you how to do it. Now, we painted this thing Friday. Today is Monday. It's had a couple days to cure and that is key. With any paint job, you want one or two days before you wet sand that. I prefer to do it a couple days after I've painted it because it's gonna be easier to wet sand. Some clear coats, if you wait a week or two, it's gonna be very difficult to wet sand that and get that smooth. But let's get started and I'll share the first step in this process. And we've got a few little particles of dust in this paint job. So we wanna remove those. Now it also kinda of died back just a little bit. So what dieback is, is when you lose gloss after it cures it had cured just a little bit too much before I applied my second coat and that will cause a little bit of dieback. But we can correct that very easily and it's not terrible. You can see it has a nice gloss and a nice shine, but right here there's a little bit of dieback. And because we're taking care of these dust particles, we're going to take care of that as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to show you how I do it. The first thing I like to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to denib any of these dark dust particles that I can find. I'm going to use 2000 grit sandpaper. Before you start wet sanding your car, you want to make sure the surface is nice and clean. You don't want to wet sand any dirt that's on the panel. So clean it thoroughly, soap and water, wipe it down with a microfiber towel. Then we can go through and denib the dust particles with our toll cut block and the 2000 grit sandpaper. I'll leave links to these tools and products I use in the description if you're interested. After we went around and we've denibbed these dust particles, we wanna make sure we wipe it off again because you could have broken loose some dust and it could still be on the surface of your panel and you don't wanna wet sand that in to your new clear coat. If I'm wet sanding the whole panel, I'm gonna use this 3M 2000 grit um, I can either do it by hand or I can use a soft foam block and wrap this around it and sand the whole panel. Now, if I'm just going around and I'm knocking down some dust nibs, I'm going to use this Toll Cut Kovax block. It comes in a kit and it comes with diff different grit sandpapers. This is a 2000 grit on the backside here. I have a piece of 1200. Let's get on a particle of dust. Okay, so right here we have a little particle of dust. I'm just going to take this Toll Cut with the 2000 grit and I'm going to sand it just in a circular motion kind of. Yeah, I mean, you can go different directions. It doesn't really matter, but I typically like to go in a circular motion and we'll just sand this a little bit until it's completely smooth. Now there was a little particle of dust here, so we'll get that one. Now 2000 grits fine enough that it buffs out pretty easy, but we're going to go over this with some 3000 grit. So now I'll just go around this entire panel and I'll knock down any dust I find with this toll cut kit. Now, if you have excessive orange peel, which is a texture in your clear coat, you'll want to hand sand it with the 2000 grit to knock down that texture, get it flat before you start buffing. That's if you want a flat finish. Now there are, there is orange peel in every paint job, so you don't necessarily have to get a flat finish, but if that's what you're looking for, that's how you're going to do it. This really looks pretty good and there's not a lot of texture. I'm going to feel over the rest of this, make sure I have all the dirt nibs out and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to buff it. Okay, now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use two different types of sandpaper. This is not absolutely necessary. I just find it much easier to buff and polish if you refine those 2000 grit scratches. There's a lot of different manufacturers in, of sandpaper that you can use. This is 3M product. This is called Trizac. So what we'll do is we're gonna go over it with a 3000 grit Trizac. Now you can use this on an orbital sander like this uh, DA here. You just apply it there and you're gonna use this wet. And then we want to go over it, or I like to go over it with a 5,000 grit. This almost gives it a little bit of a shine, so it's really easy to polish out once you go over it with this 5,000. I am going to use the DA, but you could also do this with these sheets of paper by hand. So I'm just going to wet down this paper here, and then I'll wet down the surface. I don't need a ton of water, but, and then we're going to start at one end and work our way this way. You don't need to use a high speed. We'll 
we'll wet sand this with the 2000 grit over this entire bedside and then we'll go over it with the 5000. Now I spend a little bit more time sanding the 2000 grit scratches with the 3000 grit sandpaper in order to refine those scratches. It takes a little bit longer to go from 2000 to 3000. I won't need to spend as much time sanding with the 5000 to get out those 3000 grit scratches. Once we're done with this, we can go ahead and polish it up and I'll share with you how to do that. Okay, now we're gonna dry this off with our microfiber towel. See how it's nice and shiny. Now we didn't remove all of the texture because this vehicle has a certain amount of orange peel. The vehicle itself has texture from the factory and we want to match that texture. We don't want it to be completely flat. And I need to go over a little bit of this area right here. I'll probably hit this with a little bit of 2000 by hand and then we'll go over it with the 3000 and the 5000. So I'm just going to use a piece of 3M 2000 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna hold it flat on my hand. We're gonna sand this area. You can use a soft block if you prefer, but for this small area and as much as I have to do right here, this is gonna be sufficient. You wanna hold your hand flat though, and you wanna make sure the surface is clean. It should be a consistent sound when you're sanding. But if you hear anything gritty or feel like anything's trapped under the sandpaper, you need to stop, clean your surface, and then continue wet sanding. What can happen is you can get a particle of dust or something trapped between your sandpaper and the panel, and that will be scratching your clear coat. And it's good just to wipe it down before you do your final sanding over it. Make sure it's clean, and then go over it one last time. And that way, if you do have any deeper scratches, this will help sand those out. Okay, let's go over this with some 3000. When it comes to buffing, you have a few different options. You can use a rotary buffer. This is a Milwaukee rotary buffer. This is cordless. Basically what that means is it's gonna spin in one direction. Or you can use an orbital polisher, and what that means is this head oscillates. So it goes in all different directions. Now the orbitals take a little bit longer to polish out. Rotaries are a little bit quicker, but there's a bigger learning curve with the rotaries. You can burn through paint a lot easier with a rotary polisher whereas the orbital is much more forgiving. We're gonna use the rotary. We're gonna mask off this black trim. We do not wanna hit this mask, that black trim with the rotary polisher, and we have to get pretty close to the edge. This polisher spins in a clockwise direction, so we always want it to be spinning away from any edges, not into it. If you're spinning into the edge and you happen to catch that edge, like if I was buffing here and it caught this edge, it would easily burn through that clear coat. So the compound I prefer is the CSI Cremex polish. This is an all-in-one polish. It has less fillers than like 3M or some of the other polishes. And, I, and it polishes really well. So we're just going to put a few dots on here. We're just going to spread this around before we turn on our machine. You don't need a lot of speed to start with. Work that compound into the panel. Plus, it's gonna, it won't sling all the compound everywhere if you start off slowly. Now, see how my rotary polish is spinning this way? I want to go this way on that edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section, about a one-foot section right here, and I'm just going to... Slowly polish it out. As that compound works in, I can speed up a little bit. Okay, so now you can see how it polished out, that area that we wet sanded. So it came out real nice. It really doesn't take that much when you use 2,000, 3,000, and then 5,000. 
So we're gonna go over the rest of this panel. So one thing is I like to tilt my buffer just a little bit. So I'm using basically this half of the buffer. Now, sometimes if I'm in a flat area, I'll, I'll hold it flat. But most of the time I've got a little tilt to my buffer as I'm moving. That's just a precaution. So I don't catch this edge of the buffer if I'm going this direction. If I tilt it just a little bit, this edge is off the panel and we're not gonna catch that edge. Now, different clears, they have different buffing times. So some clear coats are gonna remain softer for a longer period of time, and that can make it more difficult to get those fine scratches out. This clear coat is the Finish One FC710, which is a spot panel clear, so it cures a little bit quicker and a little bit harder, and it makes it easy to buff. Now, I have used the 720, which is an overall clear coat. That takes a little bit longer to cure to where you can cut and buff it and get out those fine scratches. Just keep that in mind when you're buffing fresh clear coat. You're still getting a lot of fine scratches even after you've done the wet sanding and polish but you still see some fine scratches. That's an indication that it may not be totally cure so you can polish those scratches out. So in that case you want to set, let it sit a little bit longer and then try and rebuff it. Here's a good look at the finished product. It came out beautifully. Buffing is not that difficult, just takes a little bit of practice. I would recommend starting out with that orbital polisher. You can find some decent, inexpensive polishers at Harbor Freight or on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? And if you want some tips and tricks on how to get a clean paint job, check out this video now. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.